Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us at the Geisel School of Medicine Class of 2021 Class Day Ceremony. I know we all very much prefer to be doing this in person. Uh, unfortunately, we've had to adapt given the weather conditions, so I thank you for your patience in that regard. I don't think it lessens our ceremony and the importance of it in any way. It's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all to the ceremony today and to serve as the moderator for the program. I'd like to start with some specific uh, thank yous and welcomes. First of all, welcome to our graduates on the cusp of receiving their degrees, to the families and friends that are accompanying them and that are watching and, and joining them today, to guests that have been invited, to the Geisel and Dartmouth faculty and alumni that are viewing this and participating. And now I'd like to give a few special introductions. Joining us today will be our invited speaker, Dr. Rita Sharon. She is the Bernard Schoenberg Professor of, so of the School of Medicine and Professor of Medicine and the Chair of the Department of Medical Humanities and Ethics at Columbia University. Also, our senior academic leadership who is joining us today. Dr. John Dick, Interim Senior Associate Dean of Medical Education Associate Dean of Clinical Education and Assistant Professor of Medicine. Also, Dr. Allison Holmes, Associate Dean of Student Affairs and Associate Professor of Pediatrics. And Dr. John Hood, President of the Geisel School of Medicine Alumni Council. At this time of year, we always make part of our program an expression of respect for all the, the members of the faculty and staff who have served the institution for so long and who have retired during the past year. Their names are listed in the program and located on the Class Day website. So to begin our program, we're gonna start with our, our invited speaker. And it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Rita Sharon. She completed the MD at Harvard in 1978 and the PhD in English at Columbia in 1999. Her research focuses on the consequences of narrative medicine practice, narrative medicine pedagogy, and close reading therapy. In pioneering this area of scholarship, she has been recognized in many ways, including receiving a Guggenheim Fellowship, a Rockefeller Foundation Bellagio Residency, and research funding from the National Institutes of Health, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the American Board of Internal Medicine, the Josiah Macy Jr. Foundation, and several other private foundations. She was chosen by the National Endowment for the Humanities to deliver the 2018 Jefferson Lecture. That lecture is the highest honor the federal government be bestows for distinguished intellectual achievement in the humanities. She inaugurated and teaches in the Master of Science in Narrative Medicine graduate program at Columbia. She is the Bernard Schoenberg Professor of Social Medicine, the founding chair of the Department of Med Medical Humanities and Ethics, a professor of medicine at Columbia University and executive director of the Columbia Narrative Medicine Program. So please join me in welcoming her to our class day ceremony. Dr. Sharon. I'm honored to join this graduation class of 2021. I am with you today, even though I'm not really with you. I treasure this invitation as a sign that my work in radical listening and narrative medicine somehow awakens your hope in the power and even love of medicine. As the events of the recent weeks on your campus have unfolded, I decided to keep my pledge to be with you today so as to honor you, the class of 2021. I am here on your behalf. We all know that our institutions are microcosms and macrocosms of systemic and structural policies and practices. 
No one is spared the responsibility of naming the principles we vow to live by. And all of us are charged to enact our moral stance, however costly that might be. It gets very costly and has always. There is endless room for destruction and creation, for betrayal and affirmation. We are all living through the viral and racial injustice pandemics. You came of age as proto-physicians in this double plague. Although you might have been shielded from exposure to SARS-CoV-2 at the beginning, I think you were sent home uh, for a period of months there in, in, the, uh, in the spring of 2020. Uh, but you were soon enough on the wards, in your PPE, your clinical training irrevocably transformed by the novel virus and the national response to it. We were all exactly a year ago yesterday, irrevocably transformed by the killing of George Floyd and the amplifications of the charge to face up to America's ongoing legacy of slavery. I want to show you two images which can say perhaps better than I can say some of the things necessary uh, to uh, consider. We see a beautiful silver crescent, a perfect crescent, on a slanty horizon of a pocked, arid-looking terrain. Those of us over 60 know exactly what this is. This is um, Apollo 15, 1971. The Earthlings are on the, the um, surface of the moon, taking a picture of the Earth. And we today look at this and we say, wait a minute, where am I? If that's the Earth, where am I? Am I not of the earth? Am I not on the earth? This looks like a perfect earth. And I know my earth is not perfect. Do I belong to it or not? And here's another image. This is a painting. It's not a photograph. Latvia, Latvian painter Vija Selmenic. Um, is, this is part of her series called Ocean. Uh, this one doesn't really have a name. We call it the Big C. So what do we see? We see black, we see white, we see gray, we see ivory, uh, we see ripples, maybe the, the presence of wind. Um, to some of us, that, this looks very buoyant, very uh, universal, very freeing. To others of us, it may look like danger. It may think about drowning. It may not be evidence of safety. A literary critic would call this a synecdoche. Uh, it's a square inch of, of ocean, isn't it? And it's, a synecdoche stands for a larger whole of which it is a part. And so I, I, I appeal to this image to help you all think about your medicine as a, 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 a symbol, a standing for all of what we consider medicine. So what about the medicine? What about all you learned in this sped up, slowed down, magnified, telescoped view of the real? You, you came of age in this scourge. You came of age with a shocking nearness to death, both on your ward services and in your country and on your planet. We who came before you and those who came after you did not have to envision our early deaths as you had to. We did not have to be on the wards when patients were inexplicably dying, all of them alone. We who came before you and those who came after you will recognize you as the pinnacle generation. You, and when I say you, of course I'm including in that you, uh, all the uh, clinicians who, who joined you on the wards. Uh, but you, among others, are the ones who had to say yes, to accept the risk to your lives. You measured the risk and you stayed. 
You did not flinch. You could have. You did not flinch. You were the ones who know the absolute terror of the plague. You were confronted with the unimaginable, a killer virus that forced you away out of the hospital for a period of time, knowing that some of your teachers and colleagues would lose their lives to infection or to despair and even suicide in the face of the unfathomable helplessness. You were the ones who heard the 7 p.m. hero worship every night for months. Did you feel like heroes? You were the ones who marveled, I hope, at the extraordinary bioscience that in a matter of months had figured out the virus's genome, the spike protein, the mRNA virus defenses, the transmission routes, the successes and failures of so many tried treatments, and finally, the vaccines themselves. And you, the parents and siblings and partners and friends of our amazing graduates, what did you go through knowing they were at risk? This makes you the most experienced graduating class ever, not in pandemic medicine, but in fundamental medicine, medicine itself, medicine stripped down to its essence. You know that an effective medicine comes to recognize the individual patient along with the recognition of health disparities and of medicine's injustices of the past, that it collaborates with community members, public health and policy colleagues, interprofessional clinicians, all of us, toward an equitable and just health care for all. Members of the class of 2021, I hope you feel your mastery. I hope you feel what you have earned. You have earned our praise, our gratitude. In a marvelous reversal, you have become our role models. Do you see? I bet the pandemic enlarged your imaginations, deepened your capacity to perceive what was in front of your eyes, to express the ghostly thoughts in your minds, to capture those disturbed dreams, if you are like medical students everywhere, you have been writing, texting, photographing, journaling, doing the things that artists do, not only to raise their voices, but to hear their voices to begin with. I'm reminded of the last page of James Baldwin's short story, Sonny's Blues. Sonny is a jazz pianist, and he is sitting at the piano now, for almost the first time since his release from prison. He plays the piano solo um, with, with his uh, quartet in the jazz standard, Am I Blue? And I hope some of you have heard this as, as sung by Billie Holiday or Ray Charles. They all gathered around Sonny and Sonny played. Sonny's fingers filled the air with life, his life, Sonny went all the way back. He really began with the spare, flat statement of the opening phrase of the song. Then he began to make it his. It was very beautiful because it wasn't hurried and it was no longer a lament. I seemed to hear with what burning he had made it his, with what burning we had yet to make it ours. Freedom lurked around us, and I understood at last that he could help us to be free. Your medicine is your art. Make it yours. With what burning will you make it yours? Your capacity to listen fully to what your patients tell you, to perceive and witness what they have been through, will render you both whole. Not a lament, your embrace of medicine will, I hope, fill the air with life. Like Sunny, your art will help others to be free. Make it yours.
Thank you so much for those wonderful words, Dr. Sharon. Uh, your dedication to something that's, that's bigger than yourself is very clear. Uh, I, certainly the comment about we all have a capacity for destruction and for creation is something that resonated with me quite deeply. So thank you so much for, for being part of our ceremony today. It's now my very good pleasure to introduce our medical student speaker today, Patrick Tolosky. Patrick. Thank you everyone for celebrating together our graduation from medical school today and our transition into our next chapters. The number of people I would have to name to thank everyone involved in bringing us here today would go well beyond my allotted speaking time. So on the count of three, shout out a name of someone you want to thank. One moment to think and one, two, three. <laughs> thank you everyone. <laughs> I think I heard thank yous to faculty, staff, fellow students, parents, loved ones, and most importantly, the patients who taught us so much along the way. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge that this ceremony is taking place on land originally inhabited by and cared for by the indigenous peoples of the Wabanaki Confederacy. It is the last hour of us being medical students. I know it is hard that we aren't all here sharing the same physical space with all of our loved ones and family. That being said, we can still share this moment together, no matter where you are in the world. I encourage everyone here today and everyone tuning in to just take a deep breath and be in this moment together. And Kyle, we know that you are here with us too. I hope we all have decades ahead of us as physicians, as leaders, as healers, but I also know that our time will be finite, which leads us to wonder what we should do with our time on this earth. I could say be compassionate, intelligent, humanistic, and dedicated, inquisitive, thoughtful, careful, and ethical, but we all know these things, even if they are hard to embody day in and day out. I don't know the five most important values for an intern or the 30-step plan to build resilience. However, what I do know is that where we are going is sacred ground, but only if we choose to see it that way. The distractions, paperwork, scheduling, logistics, commuting, fatigue, the push for more RVUs could overwhelm us. So how could we open our eyes to the joy of medicine, to the gift of being able to walk this path? I wanna think out loud about this, mainly to think about the necessity, the difficulty, and the beauty of being present in a life where we have chosen to be healers. Let me start with a reflection I wrote down during a clerkship this past year where I was living alone and was struggling with being present. I know somewhere deep down that I can do it, just taking one step at a time, one computer click at a time, one HPI question at a time, but I am tired. It's okay to feel tired, to want to go home, to have thoughts about giving up on this training, to feel stressed. Thoughts are thoughts, emotions are emotions, but deeper down there is something that is me that can go to work tonight at 6.30 and just take it a moment at a time until I can go to bed at 3 or 4 a.m. and do it a few more times this week and then go from there. Why think of the next rotation? How unhelpful it is to think of all of my medical training at the same time when that isn't how life happens. I don't have to love every single moment of my medical training, but I don't want to wish away the growth and the suffering either. Somewhere, there is a middle path. I thought these next few minutes together would be well spent talking about being present, not because I am exceptionally good at it and have anything to teach all of you, but rather because of how often I fail every single day at being present and how I know there is a better way. On my surgery rotation, I would try to anticipate in the OR questions that might be asked and would miss the beauty of the human anatomy functioning perfectly in front of me. 
One night on internal medicine, I was asked to swing by a patient room just as I was about to go home. I went to his room, and instead of taking a breath and knowing it would only be 10 extra minutes at the end of my day, my brain would not stop firing off thoughts such as, I just want to be home and have dinner with Jess, or this conversation isn't even necessary for this admission, why am I here? It was not my best example of a present, good bedside manner. Being present isn't some abstract skill or practice. It is literally the only reality we live in, but we perseverate on the past, fear the future. If we aren't present, we can't learn from our patients. We can't be healers. Being present means being extra attentive on a physical exam and feeling a bump that just doesn't feel right, or remembering to take an extra breath during a challenging encounter with a colleague or patient to have compassion, to be patient. The need for this skill extends beyond the walls of the clinic. Being present allows us to find more joy in the garden or in playing with a child. It lets us see the beauty of a sunny day on the drive home after a hard day's work. Being present allows us to pause, take a step back, and see the big picture, such as how our diabetes medications are state of the art, but that something must be done about our food systems and economic policies to combat disease effectively. Being present applies to leadership, too. Many of you may be aware of the ongoing investigations into the alleged honor code violations in the M1 and M2 classes this winter and spring that have come under national attention. I will not comment on the details. I will note, however, that being present is just as crucial to this process. For the simple fact that there is so much discussion and unrest between a dedicated and honorable administration and a dedicated and honorable student body, in and of itself requires that there is absoluteness, not conjecture, contemplation, not reaction, discussion, not dictation, justice, not punishment, and the intention to make the world a better place. For if we are not focusing our intention on these noble priorities, then what is our motivation? Presence is also required when looking toward the future as it has the power to unify us in this unprecedented age where technology will only continue to challenge us. For such a fragile situation with decisions of the utmost gravity, where dreams and careers are in the balance, presence of the highest order is not a luxury, but a starting point. I have seen so many of you in moments of intense focus as individuals and as a group over these past four years. I saw this in a classmate who remembered to ask a patient how they were doing emotionally when other members of the team focused on their acute reason for being admitted to the hospital. I heard this listening to a colleague tell their story of sitting with a dying patient and just being there with them when no other treatments existed. I felt this in the collective attention of the room in psychology of illness sessions, when patients would come to discuss their experience of illness with the whole class. I noticed this when, one night, out in the woods, at the 1966 cabin, a giant thud boomed and the collective attention was remarkable, awaiting to see if the student who fell off the ladder, who shall not be named, was actually still alive. <coughs> Kevin. <coughs> the truth is, we are all doing this already, every day. The challenging part is for us to harness the power of being present, to be aware of our being present, and to flex that muscle and make it stronger and enrich our lives with the sacredness of the now. I constantly fail at being present. Deadlines and to-do lists creep into my mind constantly. However, the moments where I am present give me hope to keep trying. The moments where I have sensed presence with all of you inspire me to do better. We won't always be perfect, but acknowledging that we aren't 100% present 100% of the time is a good launch point into doing this work to better serve our families, our patients, ourselves, and our wider community. I will close with a short picture painted by Melody Beattie in one of her poems in Journey to the Heart. I would highly recommend it as a nightly read. See the mountain climber as she climbs the mountain. There are dangers and precipices and challenges along the way but the higher she climbs, the steeper it gets. The more tired she is, the more energy she has put into the climb. Don't tell yourself that the way you feel is an indication you should stop. 
The way you feel now is the way anyone would feel who is so deeply committed to life. It's the way anyone would feel who committed to climbing that mountain. Know that the rhythm of life is still there, moving you forward. Focus intently on each step, your eyes focused on the path. Soon you will reach the top. Embrace the thrill of the climb. Geisel class of 2021, there's not any other class on this beautiful planet Earth I would rather be graduating with and celebrating with today as we take our next steps. You all inspire me, make me proud, push me to be a better human, and have made me laugh so much these past four years I won't ever be able to pay that back. Thank you all for everything you have gifted to me and all we have shared with one another. I look forward to random text messages at 3 a.m. on a Wednesday when you're bored and on call. I can't wait to see you all the next time destiny brings us together. Have an incredible next chapter on your adventures as physicians, as healers, and remember, Geisel Class of 2021, keep climbing one step at a time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patrick, for your inspired comments and for your important message about being present. So now it's time that we will recognize all of our MD candidates one by one. And uh, for this, I will ask Dr. Dick, the interim senior associate dean for medical education, to present to you all of our graduates. Thank you, Dean Compton. It is my pleasure to present the new, newest doctors coming from a Geisel School of Medicine. Dr. Shuebu Ali. Dr. Damien Almirin Banyan. Dr. E.K. Chukwu Amakiri. Dr. Peter Anderson. Dr. Carlos Aramayo. Dr. Nassim Aziz Golshani. Dr. Keenan Bashur. Dr. Dylan Baden. Dr. Amanda Bastian. Dr. Julia Bender Stern. Dr. Sarah Besson. Dr. Kira Bonasia. Dr. Kathy Cazares. Dr. Cynthia Chan. Dr. Louisa Chen. Dr. Laura Chang. Dr. Tianre Zhu. Dr. Catherine Collier. Dr. Julia Danford. Dr. Maya DeGroote. Dr. Natalie DeFavero. Dr. Lori DeLatour. Dr. Carolyn Dodge. Dr. James Doss. Dr. Ashley Dunkel. Dr. James Durham. Dr. Adam Eddington. Dr. James Finora. Dr. Alyssa Torres Flores. Dr. Diana Funk. Dr. Petter Golianin. Dr. Prajesh Gongol, excuse me. Dr. Jacqueline Gresham. Dr. Sylvia Guerra. Dr. Miriam Huck. 
Dr. Kayla Hatchell. Dr. Laura Herrera Gomez. Dr. Jamie Hillis. Dr. Leonard Hills. Dr. Bailey Hilty. Dr. Lindsay Ann Holdcroft. Dr. William Hunkler. Dr. Raina Jane. Dr. Matthew Jung. Dr. Harrison Jones. Dr. McKenna Kelly. Dr. Tewook Ko. Dr. Jack Kornfeld. Dr. Cassie Kosarek. Dr. David Lakomi. Dr. Ashara Larif. Dr. William Law. Dr. Carissa LeClaire. Dr. Angela Lee. Dr. Chad Lewis. Dr. Elsa Lindgren. Dr. Morgan Mackey. Dr. Nicolina Masha. Dr. Emily Masterson. Dr. Sand Mastrangelo. Dr. Allison Matus. Dr. Travis McCain. Dr. Ryan McClellan. Dr. Julia McDonald. Dr. Haley Moulton. Dr. Paige Newburn. Dr. Emily Norman. Dr. Keegan O'Hearn. Dr. Natalia Obrecht. Dr. Cole Ogrisiak. Dr. Vivian Paredes Bouchan. Dr. Stephanie Penix. Dr. Jacob Perlson. Dr. Aeyang Fung. Dr. Tala Radeko. Dr. Curran Rai. Dr. Soham Rege. Dr. John Rohde. Dr. Meredith Ryan. Dr. Zach Zachary Salas. Dr. Lillian So. Dr. Andrew Sheridan. Dr. Grace Solomon. Dr. Kevin Stenko. Dr. Alexander Steele. Dr. Casey Stein. Dr. Patrick Tulaski. Dr. Christina Sai. Dr. Gayathri Tumala. Dr. Devin Van Dyke. Dr. Celestine Warren. Dr. Kenneth Williams. Dr. Tranika Williams. Dr. Cameron Yi. Dr. Zhang Yin. Dr. Kais Zai. Dr. Frank Zhang. Ray Dr. Ray Zhang. And finally, Dr. Yvette Zhao.
Thank you so much, Dr. Dick. <clears throat> it is now my honor to uh, recognize the William Mellon Chamberlain Memorial Prize winner from the class of 2021. The William Mellon Chamberlain Memorial Prize and Dean's Medal is presented to the member of the graduating class who, in the opinion of the faculty, has the best overall record of academic achievement at Geisel. And this year's recipient is Matthew Zhang. Matthew has been an outstanding medical student, excelling in both the classroom and the clinical setting. A summa cum laude graduate of Dartmouth College with a major in neuroscience, Matthew continued research in this area during medical school. He was awarded a prestigious fellowship at the National Institutes of Health in the summer after his first year and during that time, he worked under the supervision of the Chief of Medical Neurology, Dr. Mark Hallett. He additionally conducted research here at Dartmouth in the Department of Surgery within the research group of Dr. Sandra Wong, who is the William and Bessie Allen Chair of the Department of Surgery. This work on melanoma, on the melanoma prediction models that he did, resulted in a prominent presentation and publication. Matthew has been described by faculty as an eager learner. He listens well, and he's engaged and enthusiastic about learning. One faculty member described Matthew as in, in, in how he has an unusual ability to sort through complex information and arrive at an assessment. In the clinical setting, Matthew has been an eager and willing, has been, has been characterized as eager and willing to care for very medically complex patients. He assumes full responsibility. He's humble and values all members of the team equally. It's also important to mention that Matthew's service to the Geisel community. He's the medical student director for the Upper Valley Memory Cafe and as the student leader of the Cancer Scholars Program. In the next few weeks, Matthew will begin his internship in internal medicine at Yale New Haven. We cannot wait to see how his career unfolds. So please join me in congratulating Matthew on this important award, and we wish him the very best. I will now ask Dr. Dick to return to the podium to present the Good Physician Award. Graduates, it has dawned on me that I uh, missed an opportunity to say congratulations to all of you. And uh, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It has really been a joy to work with you all over the past four, sometimes six years for some of you. So thank you for giving uh, your part of lives to us here at Geisel. We look forward to your futures, and uh, I look forward to seeing some of you that are staying right here at DHMC, so congratulations. It's my pleasure to announce the Good Physician Award this year. The Good Physician Award was established through the generosity of anonymous faculty members, and the recipient, a member of the graduating class, is selected by the class. Members of the class are asked to select the classmate who best exemplifies the personal and intangible qualities of the good physician. They are asked to consider these traits, emphasizing the combination of scientific and professional knowledge with the qualities of general wisdom, of caring, of empathy, and a devotion to the welfare of others, which defines the highest level of the profession of medicine. This year, the class has selected two of their classmates. This year's recipient, recipients are Tianrei Zhao and Patrick Tulaski. Congratulations, Tianrei and Patrick. Thank you, Dr. Dick. Congratulations to all of you. I would now like to ask Michael Song, to lead us in a remembrance of Kyle Janicek.
my dearest friends of the class of 2021. I offer you my sincerest congratulations for your phenomenal achievement. My main regret is that I cannot be there with you. Nonetheless, it excites me to no end to know that you will all go on to actuate and achieve the mission that we all promised and vowed in 2017. But I'm sure everyone is almost desensitized to congratulations at this point. Today, I'd like to draw your attention for another reason, for consideration and remembrance. Two and a half years ago, we lost Kyle Janicek, KJ, our classmate, my friend, our friend. Let this also be a day for us to cherish, honor, and celebrate our memory of him. On this day that marks your formative transition to doctorhood, where you take on responsibilities as a physician, I find it befitting to share with you a personal anecdote that I cherish because it reminds me why I chose this path, and I hope this touches you the same way that it continues to influence my career decisions and my future aspirations. KJ once asked me, Mike, why did you come to Geisel? To which he responded, I'm here so that I can protect and help those who aren't able to do so. That is what KJ told me was his reason in choosing medical school. Now inspired and embarrassed by how noble and inspirational his, his reason was compared to mine, I lost my words. To which KJ followed, sensing my silence. He told me, remember your reason, Mike. Your patience will appreciate it. These words resonate with me to this day. And I hope they resonate with you in the same frequency as you embark on this new chapter of your professional and personal journey. Now, of course, no tribute to KJ would be complete without a reference to Dragon Ball Z. So shall I now respect. It is no sin to fight for what is right. In noblest memory of KJ, let us now go forth to embark on the work that we've worked so hard to do. As we fight the battles, others cannot fight. Let us remember our reasons and our path that led to this moment. Class of 2021, congratulations, and let's get to work. Thank you, Mike, for that remembrance. I would like to ask everyone to please join me in a moment of silence to remember Kyle, to honor uh, his family and their memory of Kyle. A moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. Next on the program, I would like to recognize the members 
of the graduating class who are active military service members or veterans. Chad Lewis, Ryan McClellan, Cole Ogrizak, John Rohde, and Zachary Salas. Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Allison Holmes. She's the Associate Dean for Student Affairs, and she will lead you in reciting of the Hippocratic Oath. Hi, everyone. Congratulations. Nice to be with your families, too. In many ways, the most significant and memorable event today for our medical students is the Hippocratic Oath recitation. In our profession, it is a custom established more than 2,000 years ago that no one may be admitted to its honors who has not first expressly taken upon herself or himself its obligations. Now, on behalf of our elders, I call upon our graduates to take, as we have taken before you, the oath which bears the name of Hippocrates. We can still find no nobler sentiments than the most ancient in which to hand down the traditions of our calling. I invite all physicians who are gathered in the audience today with our graduates to please stand and to join our graduates in reciting the oath. I do solemnly swear by whatever I hold most sacred that I will be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members, that the regimen I adopt shall be for the benefit of my patients according to my ability and judgment and not for their hurt or any wrong. That I will lead my life and practice my art in uprightness and honor. That into whatsoever house I shall enter, it shall be for the good of the sick to the utmost of my power holding myself far aloof from wrong, from corruption, from the tempting of others to vice. That I will exercise my art solely for the care of my patients and will give no drug, perform no operation for a harmful intent, even if solicited, far less suggested. That whatsoever I shall he see or hear of the lives of my patients, which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviolably secret. These things I do swear. And now, if I will be true to this, may prosperity and good repute be forever mine. The opposite, if I shall prove myself forsworn. Thank you, Dr. Holmes. It's now my pleasure to welcome Dr. John Hood, who from the class of 1992, to provide you with a warm welcome as the newest members of the alumni. Dear Geisel class of 2021, on behalf of all Geisel alumni, I say welcome, welcome, welcome. We are thrilled to have you join us. When you began medical school four years ago, I don't think any of you imagined that you would be thrust into a worldwide pandemic not seen for over 100 years. You have all responded in extraordinary fashion. You threw yourselves into becoming experts in infectious disease, preventative medicine, and population health. You are also standing together, working to eradicate systemic racism within society and within medicine. And you were doing this all while maintaining an incredibly demanding medical study schedule. You have embraced developing an awareness, an urgency, and a desire to change medicine on systemic and global levels. 
I will not say that you are destined to become leaders in medicine because you are already leading medicine now. If you are like all of the alumni that have come before you on graduation day, you are not only excited and happy, but you may also be feeling scared, nervous, and possibly feeling alone as you begin your journey as a physician. I am here to reassure you that you are decidedly not alone. You have an incredible resource and team of Geisel alumni who are waiting to help you not only succeed, but to thrive. In the not too distant future, you will be an intern on call. You will be the only person on your team left in the hospital. You will be exhausted. You may be feeling overwhelmed. You will get a page at two in the morning to place an IV that no one else can place. You will be asking yourself, why am I doing this? This is not what I signed up for. You will reach the patient's bedside and put your hand into the pocket of a coat that was once bright white, but now is not. As you work your hand around the bottom of the pocket, looking for the crumpled up alcohol swab, past the half eaten granola bar and the pen that has stained the pocket, we want you to remember the first time that you ever put your hand into that pocket. There was a note from an alumni welcoming you to Geisel and to medicine. We want you to remember that note will always be with you wherever you go. The Geisel alumni community will always be with you wherever you go and we know you are going to go far. We wish you the most heartfelt congratulations. We wish you the fullest sense of purpose and fulfillment possible throughout your entire careers. Geisel has stressed that you be kind, caring, and compassionate with your patients. The alumni stress that you be kind, caring, and compassionate with yourselves as well. You are now Geisel alumni, and that is awesome. Thank you, Dr. Hood, for those inspiring words. Really well done. So this is nearing the completion of our program tonight. I, I want us to start by saying congratulations to all of our graduates of, of the class of 2021. We're very proud of all of you. I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank all of your family and your friends who have been behind you all the way during your medical training some of which are joining you for this ceremony at the moment, some of which could not join you. Medical school is a very intense experience and nobody can, can do it well all alone. So uh, it, is the, it is the support of your family and friends that help to get you through this program. And in that spirit, I would like to ask you to give a heartfelt thanks and applause to all of your family and friends that are here with you today. And we're in an auditorium with nobody, but I'm going to do a little applause. So. <clears throat> I am so sorry that we couldn't gather in person. I, I know everyone was looking forward to an in-person event today. Uh, unfortunately, Mother Nature had other plans, uh, and we had to adjust accordingly. And we really had to make a decision this morning to uh, really ensure that people were not put at undue risk being in the elements outside. I would also like to thank all of our speakers today. Um, I thought the messages were wonderful, in particular Dr. Sharon for uh, participating and giving you her message. I really appreciate her inspiring thoughts. Um, and I, I do plan now to go learn more about narrative medicine, so I think this is a really interesting interesting thing for me to, to learn more about. Uh, lastly, I would like for you all to join me in thanking the staff members, the staff in the uh, Office of Student Affairs, in the Office of Medical Education. They have supported you all the way from the beginning uh, to, to the end. And they have um, been working nonstop in the background the past few days to try and put together a ceremony for you that, that you will feel appreciative of. So I really want to thank them for everything they've done over all these years and, and what they've been doing over the past few days. So thank you to all of the staff who's, who've helped. So thank you. So um, this, this will conclude our, our ceremony today. On behalf of all the faculty and staff at Geisel, it really is my distinct pleasure and privilege to congratulate all of you on, on your graduation today. Uh, we all, uh, 
admire you. We admire your contribution, uh, your, your accomplishments, and we are looking forward to your, uh, your uh, achievements in medicine going forward. I offer you my deepest congratulations on graduation, and I look forward to being part of a future that you're going to build for us all. So congratulations to all the graduates, and good luck on everything you do going forward. Thank you very much.